Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it seems like I'm always designing a little switch mode power supply for whatever a project it is for whatever purpose and uh, often you have to characterize these uh, DC to DC converters, their performance, their efficiency performance or just their performance over the entire load uh, from you know zero load up to say one amp if the uh, switch mode power supply is designed to deliver anywhere from zero to one amp you have to characterize that and how do you test it? How do you, you know? Sure, okay, you can hook on a bunch of different power resistors on the output and to simulate a different load, but oh, that's a real pain in the ass. You've got to have a big stock of power resistors and it's just not nice. So what's needed is an electronic load that you can just dial up whatever load you need to test out your power supply. And I thought it's about time I probably built one. So I thought I would get some junk box components, see what I had lying around and lash one up, and here's the result. Let's go through it. So, what's needed for a simple electronic load? Well, basically an electronic load is just a constant current sink. It's, you need to dial in or select whatever constant current you want, and it will draw that constant current from the power supply, regardless of the power supply's voltage. It can be, you know, three volts, five volts, 15 volts, 30 volts, whatever, and the load will actually um, adjust itself to uh, extract that constant current. So, what would you think of when you're thinking about constant current uh, generators? Well, you think about the classic circuit like the LM317. Normally it's a voltage regulator, but if you put a series resistor in there, an adjustable resistor, a pot, you can actually, that actually becomes a constant current, um, well, a, in this case, a constant current generator, but if you just ground that output there um, and hook this onto your power supply, bingo, it becomes a constant current load but it has certain disadvantages this one the resistor has to be a very low value it can only be within a certain range to keep it stable and there's other issues with it and you need a big power wire around resistor and i you know it's just not really a great solution really so what i came up with is just a basic a very standard building block circuit of a of a uh, n-channel MOSFET. I had lying around an MTP3055 MOSFET. Um, this is a logic level MOSFET and it's important to get a logic level MOSFET or um, something that operates down in this range and it's basically hooked onto a standard LM324 as a series pass um, transistor and it's basically just a follower. So any voltage on the input here, if you know your basic op amp theory as you should the op amp basically will keep these two input voltages the same so if you put one volt in here into the positive pin it will do its thing and adjust so that the other pin is also at one volt and if you have a resistor down here going to ground that means that it will put one volt across the resistor in this case i've chosen one ohm one volts across one ohm is one amp so Basically, what you've got is an adjustable constant current load based on a voltage input here. Simple. Now, you may have noticed that I've got an extra voltage follower op amp here and a voltage divider, and you don't really need that. You could just hook up a pot from, say, 0 to 5 volts, power your op amp from 5, five volts and feed that straight in. But um, I just happen to have a project board that I did a previous project with and it had the quad op amp there and it had it all wired up and everything so I just decided to just use an extra voltage follower I, and actually divide that in half so if we've got a 5 volt power supply as I'll go into uh, that's a 50k pot that just gives you an adjustable voltage I've used a 10 turn pot now that's important um, because it allows you to give a very fine range so um, it means that I can adjust anywhere from like one milliamp up to an amp, for example, with 10 turns of the pots. If you've only got a single turn pot, then you're going to get a very coarse adjustment. Um, if you don't have a 10 turn pot, you can put a, um, a uh, large value resistor and a smaller, well, a large value pot and a smaller power value pot in series so you have a fine 
and a course adjustment, but I had a 10 turn pot, so it worked nice. So it generates from zero to five volts input on the pot, and uh, the uh, voltage divider here just goes from zero to two and a half. So it, it basically just allows me to go from zero to two and a half volts here is zero to two and a half amps. I can adjust with this particular circuit. But the LN324, there's issues with it, can't go to its supply rail and stuff like that. But we won't go into that. Use a precision op amp if you want that sort of stuff. Rail to rail uh, op amp. And plus there's issues with the FET. But anyway, I should easily be able to get zero to an amp out of this particular circuit. Now, if you have a look at this characteristic curve, the MTP3055 VL uh, N channel logic level MOSFET I'm using, you'll see that the Y axis is actually the gate voltage and the X axis is the output voltage, or in this case, the voltage across our load resistor, which is actually current. So effectively, the X axis is from zero to two amps. Now, as you can see, for a zero, for basically no load current at all, we require a gate voltage down around 1.5 volts now and for a um, once again on the high end to get a two amp low current we, we need a gate voltage of about four volts now our LN324 op amp because it's been powered from five volts and it's not a rail to rail output op amp you most likely won't get that four volts um, output maximum so this circuit's probably not capable as it is of two volts, but you might be able to get easily, uh, say 1.25 amps there, which is just over like 3.2 volts or thereabouts. So it should work quite well, this logic level MOSFET. And I also thought it'd be quite neat to include a little panel meter as well on there to show me my uh, set current so that I didn't have to use my put my multimeter in series to actually measure the current. It just so happens in my junk bin I've got a whole bunch of CX101 uh, very nice little um, three and a half digit uh, panel meters, 0.1% accurate, really quite nice. They can be used in a grounded configuration. The thing with these little panel meters, here they are, one of these little, um, uh, you know, LCD panel meters you can buy for five or ten bucks or something like that. This one's a bit more expensive, but some of them are not designed to be used for a common ground connection. So you can't just hook them up and then power it from your five volts up here into there and then share a common ground. Some of them will not work. It's a real trap for young players, so just be careful. But this particular one can be configured to work in a common ground configuration. And here's the actual um, circuitry. It's drawn in DaveCAD there. And uh, as you can see, that's the input configuration uh, for a divide by 10. So because the panel meter is designed for 0 to 200 millivolts input, this will do from 0 to 2 volts or 0 to 2 amps. And so my display of 1999 will read directly in milliamps with a 1 ohm load. Nice. And check it out. Here's the finished design. It, it actually looks quite uh, nice because I just so happen to have um, an old PCB. It's a battery capacity logger design I worked on which had a little PIC microcontroller and it happened to have just such the um, input configuration with the N-channel MOSFET and the op-amp here, and it was all uh, pre-wired for me, basically. And here's the load resistors, which we'll go into. Um, it had an RS-232 interface, but basically um, this, I already had it lying around, so that was pretty fortuitous. And here's the final um, built-up design. And there's the um, LM324 uh, op-amp, just some bypassing. It's got a 5-volt um, input socket here, because the panel meter happens to be a 5-volt uh, type. I've got my nice big 10 turn pot here. That's a 50k pot. It just goes in there and there's the divider resistors and there's the uh, N channel uh, MOSFET down in there, the MTP3055. And I've got 10 10 ohm 1% resistors. And the reason um, I did that, not only because I had the board, but to get a, um, a an accurate, uh, it doesn't matter so much in this application, but if you're designing your own one, to get an, a 1% accurate 1 ohm load resistor is actually quite expensive. It's actually cheaper and simpler to get 10, 10 ohm 1% uh, actual power resistors. These are 1 watt resistors, much easier to get 
one of those, or half what I think they are, um, much easier to get 10 of those and cheaper and easier than to get one big single power resistor. So there you go, we've got a nice big uh, PCB mounted heatsink on here which we'll go into and that's the finished design and it works quite well. I've got my panel meter hooked up and on the back here I've just got the input uh, the input resistors to set the um, set the differential um, input and, and have the divide by 10 ratio but that's it. And here's the final design working. I've got the input here connected up to my power supply over there. It's about a 12 volt um, input at the moment and I've dialed it up to 81 milliamps and as you can see the Gossen Metro hit is measuring the um, input current from the power supply and as you can see it pretty it corresponds pretty well and I go up and um, it's upside down here sorry the actual LCD display is up up the other way so but my cable doesn't reach but 244 milliamps it's you know it, it works pretty well so and it goes all the way up to that's uh, it's an amp at the moment and no problems at all it goes up to pretty much it's starting to max out there at 1.35 amps so there you go that's about its maximum and as you can see the panel meters are quite um, accurate there and it can go all the way down to one or at least maybe can it do one milliamp there we go it can do 1.5 milliamps minimum because that's basically one milliamp because that's as low as the you know the op amps got some um, output um, offset voltage there and I can adjust that you know, even 5 milliamps, I can tweak that. And if I wanted a finer range from, say, 0 to 200 milliamps instead of 0 to 2 amps, I would just adjust those divider resistors down there. Piece of cake. So it works quite well. Thumbs up. I'm happy with that. Now, there's one thing to actually remember about these input panel meters. Um, if you don't use precision resistors on the input here, I used, uh, I used just standard 1% resistors there was actually an offset of 16 millivolts. Um, so I had to actually tweak that value there. I had to actually adjust it and put an extra one in series just to, just to, twi just to trim it a little bit so I actually got zero on my display for zero current. Now one important thing you need to know is how much power you can dissipate in your heat sink here through your uh, power MOSFET. Now let's go through the very simple calcs. Now I've said before that heat sink uh, thermal calculations can get all messy and you don't want to get bogged down in the details but we can do some basic back of the envelope uh, calcs that are going to be pretty close to what we're going to get now what you do is you look up the data sheet for this heatsink this is an avid thermal alloy brand and I've looked up the data sheet and it's 4.5 degrees C per watt that's the spec you need to get for your heatsink that means it will rise for, for every one watt you put into this thing it will rise 4.5 degrees Celsius above the ambient temperature that's the key above ambient whatever the current ambient temperature temperature is now uh, let's go through our we've got our basic circuit here here's our power MOSFET okay we've got our load resistor here we've got our voltage in from our power supply and we've got a voltage across the resistor which we'll call VR here so we've got V in and VR and the uh, current that we actually have. So the power dissipated in the heatsink is going to be the input voltage minus the um, minus the voltage across the load resistor here times the current flowing through it because there's nothing flowing into or out of the gate here. There's no gate current at all. So all of the current flows through our power transistor. Now uh, let's assume that we want one amp, okay? So we've got one volt in here, which gives us one volt across our load resistor of 1R. So that's one volt. So it, And let's say we have 12 volts V in. Let's go through an example. If we have 12 volts V in minus one volt across our load resistor at 1 amp times 1 amp, then we're going to dissipate the power in the heatsink is going to be 11 watts. Or, and if you uh, put that into the formula for the heatsink, up here, bingo, we've got the heatsink will rise by 49.5 degrees Celsius above ambient for 11 watts power dissipation. Easy. Out of curiosity, let's do a quick check to see what temperature rise we actually get in our real heatsink here. Now I've got, I've had one amp flowing through it for quite some time, okay, and I've got 12 volts input voltage, 
there it is. So we're dissipating the 11 watts in our power resistor like that down there because we've got one volt uh, drop across our across our load resistor, as you can see down here, if I can probe that, there's our one volt drop across our power resistor. So there's um, 11 volts times uh, one amp in there. So there's 11 watts being dissipated and that's quite hot to touch. So let's get the temperature sensor and see what temperature it is. Okay, I've got my Fluke uh, reference temperature probe here. As you can see, the ambient temperature is about 20 degrees. And as per the calculations before, we said uh, for 11 watts into this heat sink, it should rise about 50 degrees, let's say 50 degrees Celsius above ambient. So we're looking for about 70 degrees Celsius. Ambient's 20 plus 50 degrees. Let's check it out. Okay, I've got my temperature probe on the heat sink, and as you can see, it's just a couple of degrees over 70. It's going to climb a bit more, but that's not bad confirmation of our back of the envelope calculations. I like it. It's pretty good. And the FET we've used in our circuit here is a 60 volt 12 amp FET. So it's actually capable of, you know, quite a decent uh, load performance. And you can tweak the load resistor value and you can tweak the op amp power supply value and all sorts of things to get, you know, to test almost any uh, power supply possible. It's just a matter of um, specking it up and, uh, you know, increasing the size of the heatsink and changing the load resistor. Easy. And if you're wondering just what this original battery capacity logger board and circuit actually did, well, here it is. It's not too different to what we've been dealing with. It's the same circuit, but we add in an intelligent microcontroller, which is hooked up to a PC so it can log things and do other stuff. But by adding an intelligent micro, what you can do is um, you can generate different types of loads. You can generate constant current, constant power, constant resistance, or any type of pulse load you desire. And the way you do that is it's got a PWM output, which generates a voltage which simulates the pot that we had, and it has an ADC down here which just measures the uh, voltage across our sense resistor down here. And that allows the micro to, just with a simple bit of math, to generate constant power, constant resistance. I know constant resistance sounds a bit uh, silly. You can just put a resistance there, an actual, you know, a five cent resistor on the load, but hey, it allows you to do it under intelligent software control and all sorts of pulse loads and things like that. So it's very flexible. Uh, and if you've ever seen like a data sheet for a um, energizer battery or something like that, they may have a battery capacity uh, performance graph Oh, that may um, have constant power or a constant resistance load or a constant current load or a pulse load over time to simulate a toy being turned on or off or something like that. And this circuit allows you to do something like that. Very versatile. So there you go. From a couple of junk box parts, we've created a put together a pretty handy little uh, constant current uh, adjustable load there to test power supplies and if you're testing a power supply you might want to get a switch mode you might want to get a graph of efficiency from 0 to 100 percent on the y-axis for a for versus low current say from 0 to 1 amp and you might actually get you know a response that looks you know, something like that it's going to peak at some particular current it might it won't be a hundred percent you'd have a damn good power supply if it was but it might be you know 90 percent or something like that and it might drop away there and having a little um a little constant current uh load like this an adjustable dc load just allows you to um graph uh power supplies the efficiency of power supplies and all sorts of other stuff over whatever load you want and i'll show you how to do that in a in a future blog episode. So, see you next time.